In this video, I'm going to talk about the Gutenberg editor and the Gutenberg project that's going to be hitting WordPress in 2018. And I'm going to talk about if that means that it's the going to be the death of the WordPress page builder and even themes. Hi, my name is Adam from WPCrafter.com where I make WordPress tutorial videos for non-techies. If you're new here, consider clicking on the subscribe button and if you don't want to miss a thing, click on the bell off to the right and YouTube will let you know when I have a new video. Anything that I talk about where a link would be involved, I'll put that in the video description box down below. So this past weekend, there was the big WordCamp US. Uh, here's the website to it. Now, I actually bought a ticket and didn't go. How cheese ball is that? I should have gone or at least given the ticket away, but they're only 40 bucks for the ticket. I will attend WordCamp Europe in 2018 and WordCamp US in 2018, but if you're not familiar with what WordCamps are, they are these organized events that happen in cities all around the globe, and it is two days. It's usually $40 to attend, although the value of it is exponentially more and the cost is exponentially more. It's through sponsorships, it's only 40 bucks to go. I went to my first one in June of 2017 and I got to meet a lot of people there that I are, am now internet friends with. Uh, so we actually got to meet. So these are word camps. I encourage you to go to at least one word camp. Now in the United States, they have the big word camp US and that is what happened this past weekend. And one of the events that always happens at word camp US is a speech by Matt Mullenweg. He's the guy that's pretty much driving the ship that we call WordPress, and he gives what is now referred to as the state of the word. And essentially, a, he talks about the where WordPress is and where it's going and what its focus is going to be on for the next 12 months. And the big hot topic of all of the sessions at the WordCamp was this thing called Gutenberg, and you might not be familiar with it, you might already be familiar with it, but I'll talk more about Gutenberg in a moment. So on Saturday, since I wasn't there to attend, they actually had a free live stream. I did watch the free live stream of the State of the Word address, but the good news is if you go to WordPress.tv, this is a website that WordPress owns, and they put the various video recorded sessions of these various word camps right here and they're free to watch and just two days ago they put the state of the word ad address that I was just talking about and it's good for you to go and watch this. I will put a link in the video description down below or just go to wordpress.tv to watch this. Now it's a long uh, uh, session, it's an hour and 43 minutes, but that's mostly because there's a lot of Q&A in it and I really got to hand it to Matt Mullenweg for being willing to take questions from the predominantly developer crowd that was in attendance because there is this really hot topic called Gutenberg. Now, I am waiting for one more session to uh, come up here and that's going to be from Morton Hendrickson and he is probably from the developer side of things, the guy that's really been the most vocal about Gutenberg and what it is and the direction it's going and he had a session as well that I think is equally as good as the state of the word. So now let's talk about Gutenberg and what I'm going to do while I talk about it, I'm going to play this demo right here of it. So let me zoom in on that video. So right here at this point in the state of the word session, they're giving a demonstration of this thing called Gutenberg. So essentially, the challenge with WordPress right now is there's some things in it that are not intuitive and there's other closed platforms like Squarespace or Wix or some of those types of services that have different, more user-friendly interfaces for building out pages and content and whatnot. Of course, they're closed systems and it's not open source and you don't own it. That's the huge benefit of WordPress and that's why I love WordPress. You can do so much with it. So 
Gutenberg is the code name for a project that is really designed to take WordPress forward for the next 12 years. And that was a, a time frame that was mentioned over and over again in the state of the word that this is something that's going to take WordPress where it needs to go for the future. And what it's going to do is it's going to be a visual page builder, kind of like a page builder. Now, not like Elementor or Beaver Builder, those are front end page builders. Gutenberg gives you this hybrid experience where, and I'm gonna show you Gutenberg live, where you're in WordPress and you can kind of assemble a page or a post with something called blocks. So in this section of the video right here, you can see the paragraph of text, that's a box. Right now he's putting an image in, that is a, a block. The image above it was a block. So essentially the vision of WordPress moving forward is to reduce everything to these blocks. So your page will be a series of blocks. Now Gutenberg is going to be released with WordPress version 5. Right now we're on 4.9. It's going to be released with WordPress version 5, which is coming up actually pretty quick. So in the state of the word, it was revealed that um, Matt thinks that it's going to be ready in about four months. I think it's a little bit maybe wishful thinking. Maybe it will be ready, but it, the actual version five of WordPress won't be released for probably, my guess is a couple months after that. Either way, this thing's coming fast. This thing's coming soon, and it's going to change WordPress fundamentally, but not yet. So you don't have to worry about it right now. The thing is, is everything we know about WordPress is eventually going to change. And this is literally the first step. And it's actually a tiny step because the true vision of Gutenberg isn't just for assembling pages and posts. You will actually assemble your entire website via this block system and it's going to be replacing a lot of things. It's going to be replacing short codes. It's going to be replacing widgets. All these things that we've come to learn about WordPress and how to build our websites out, it's all going to be reduced to this thing called blocks that Gutenberg's going to bring. So initially, Gutenberg is just going to change the text editing experience. So what you see right here, this is how you're going to build a page or a post. In the future, you will actually be building your entire website with this. And this is actually a very, very good thing. And people love their page builders. And so there's this, this, I intentionally didn't make this video a couple days ago. I had a lot of thoughts on it. I wanted to kind of, kind of let the dust settle and see what other people were saying about it before I shared my opinions. And there is a lot of, of I think, fear mongering going around that, you know, this spells the death of page builders and if you're on this channel, you're probably using Elementor or Beaver Builder or Thrive Architect or Divi and you love your page builder. I love my page builder as well. And the, the debate is what does this mean for page builders? Let me actually pause this and then go into what Gutenberg actually looks like when you're using it. So I, what I got out of the, the, the state of the word, not the message. It wasn't church. Um, what I got out of the state of the word was that what the goal kind of is initially is bringing standardization to how WordPress pages or po and posts are built. And then the next step would be bring standardization to how you build your entire website. So how themes interact and how that part plays with WordPress. And I think that is great. So what an example of standardization is I have a iPhone here and an iPhone has its proprietary plug, charging plug, right? I can only use this on Apple devices. Now, what we usually charge all our other devices with is your standardized USB connector or USB 3 is becoming the new standard and you can use that same connector in all of these different devices except Apple because Apple's a closed system. Well, right now, 
uh, all of these page builders are creating content in a closed system. So a perfect example of that would be the translation plugin WPML. So for every page builder, WPML has had to create a separate integration for Elementor, a separate integration for Beaver Builder, a separate integration for each of these. And the same goes for a plugin like Yoast. Yoast has had to build separate compatibilities for all of these different page builders so that it can read its content. And that's because all these page builders, they're creating their content in kind of like a closed system. There's no standard. Well, that is what Gutenberg will resolve is there'll be this standardization. So various plugins can actually communicate with each other and not have to accommodate each closed system and each closed architecture. So this process of standardization, I think is very needed and is going to be really, really good. And it's actually going to end up benefiting all of us, the end user. Another important thing to note is Gutenberg is not going to be, and according to the state of the word, it's not going to be a front end editor like you would get with these other page builders that I've talked about. It's not going to do that. It's going to be that kind of hybrid editor that you saw. However, themes will have the ability to try to make it look similar to how it will actually look on the front end of your website. Let me actually show you a demo. So you can actually install Gutenberg right now. I wouldn't recommend it on a production website, you know, a website that's on the internet that you actually have important stuff on. I wouldn't recommend that, but you can go to plugins, add new, do a search for a search for Gutenberg, download and activate it. And what it's going to do is this. So when you go to create a new post or a page, you see here's the add new button, but it adds this little drop down. So you can click on the drop down and say, am I going to add a new Gutenberg based page or post or use the classic editor? So you're going to hear that phrase classic editor for a while. And so uh, when you install Gutenberg, it's going to give you this Gutenberg demo, which I have right here. And now you're going to see I have Gutenberg on this page or post. And you can see some of this does it looks kind of similar to what some page builders do right you get this full width image and you can put text on it and you can have uh, you know different headlines here you, as I scroll down you can have a button and you can do some other things there's a gallery down here like this and there's a table right here I was playing around with it and messed it up and you have some videos now when I look at this I, I can't see myself saying this is gonna replace my page builder ever you know this it will be really fun for creating a content rich blog post, but I can never see this as coming close to what you can build with a page builder today for say a home page or some of your more uh, anchored pages on your website. I'm not talking about blog posts. So kind of the direction that WordPress wants is for for developers to build these blocks that you can easily add to Gutenberg. So you'll have a list of blocks to choose from. Now, the interesting thing is when this thing is fully shaken down, a lot of the plugins that are available today are going to be worthless. They're not going to be used anymore unless the developer it figures out how to integrate it and spends the time to integrate it with Gutenberg. Uh, that's going to happen to a lot of plugins, unfortunately, but I think it's good because it's going to be a good reset to kind of flush things out of the repository that aren't Gutenberg compatible. So it's a tough call whether I don't, I don't see how anyone can use this and really believe that this is going to ever be able to compete with one of the modern front end page builders that we have today. Where I see things happening is somehow the modern page builders are going to have to figure out how to get the content it creates to translate in the back end of WordPress into these Gutenberg compliant blocks. That is the way I see things having to work out. And here's the thing. When WordPress 5 drops, you're going to have this option of creating content in Gutenberg 
or in the classic editor. And just so you know, uh, when there's a major version update, it doesn't get automatically pushed like a security update does to your WordPress website. So you will have the option to click on the button to update. Now the thing is most people are going to update, but there's going to be compatibility for a period of time where people are going to have this option to create content in Gutenberg or create content in the classic editor. Realistically, I don't think we even know what's going to happen as far as page builders go with Gutenberg well into 2019, which is a very long time away. I will say for me though, as someone that has been using page builders for the last three years, I just can't wrap my mind around how this is going to compete with one of the commercially available page builders. I do think that this could meet some needs and maybe eliminate the need for some people to actually install a page builder, but even free page builders just school what Gutenberg can do right now in these blocks. Now, I'm super excited about Gutenberg though. I do think it's gonna be the path forward, a visual way of building your website and you will reduce a lot of the friction where why can't I just click in the header and edit something because you have to go to this special place. So a lot of that's gonna eventually be eliminated, but I don't see any of this stuff even really being very shooken up until 2019. So, you know, a lot of the page builders, you have like a one year renewal. Uh, I don't see anything changing in 2018. I think some of the layers of what, how this is going to go down will end up being revealed as the months go by. I don't really see much happening until summertime, but the path forward, which is clear to me, is that Gutenberg as standardization is an awesome awesome thing and what's going to have to happen is each commercial page builder is going to have to figure out how they can make what they're doing work with Gutenberg and I think it will end up being a much better experience because then we can take advantage of that whole standardization concept. So there is a bit of melodrama dr dr out of there, out there about, you know, Gutenberg is going to be the end of page builders as we know it. And they're going straight after the page builder market. And really it was actually addressed in the state of the word that, you know, there, here's these categories of plugins and, and hundreds of thousands of people are using it. So WordPress wants to take it and bring kind of the concept to the masses but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's ever going to come close to the power of what we get with one of our modern page builders. It would just have too much catching up to do. And I think what's going to just end up happening is the page builders, they're going to figure out how to make what it creates fit within the Gutenberg framework and you'll still use your Elementor, Beaver Builder, Divi or Thrive Architect in order to build your website. Now, not being a code developer, I don't know how that would happen, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. That doesn't mean it's not going to happen because I think if they want to stay in business, that is what is going to have to happen because ultimately in two or three years, you're going to be using Gutenberg to build your entire website and they need to figure out how to make their product fit within that paradigm in order to stay in business because people love their page builders. I love my page builder. I want to use my page builder. I do not want to use Gutenberg. I can never envision myself using this to do what I can do today. I don't see how this is going to get there. So anyways, I know I'm a little scatterbrained with some of my thoughts, but my clear message was I don't think, and I'm bucking the trend here, I don't think page builders have anything to worry about. The businesses don't. Sure, they've got a lot of work ahead of them. They're going to have to figure out how to fit within this Gutenberg block type of framework, but I don't think they have anything to worry about. They just have a lot of work on their plate and they have every motivation to do it because they already have these large customer bases and we'll see which page builders fare the best. I know the one that I'm the most concerned with is Divi because they have all that legacy code. They're so dependent upon short codes. I would love it if Divi saw this is the time to break 
away from the short codes that they have always had in it and instead come up with an alternative version of Divi that doesn't work like that and it's a good time to make that break. And so obviously some of their old Divi sites can just continue using the old version of the builder, uh, maybe have some converter or something like that. But I would love to see Divi step up to the plate and rethink how it generates its code and makes it work within this block framework and completely abandon the short codes. Even if some websites are going to be left out in the dust, it's going to be better for everyone moving forward. And it would help them silence all the haters over the years that have complained about the short codes. So that's all I have for you. My thoughts on Gutenberg. I want to hear what your thoughts are on Gutenberg down below. I am going to put a link to WordPress.tv. Of course, you can just go to WordPress.tv. I'm going to encourage you to watch the state of the word. If you are invested in WordPress, meaning you have a website or you're making websites or you're a software developer and you're in an agency, you're really invested into WordPress, you really should watch the state of the word so you know what's coming and it has actually great things are coming ahead. The future of WordPress is coming right ahead in front of us. So I want to hear what your thoughts are on Gutenberg in the comment section down below. Hey, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.